Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Roy Candy. And I am Joey Evans. And today we are taking a look at the newest big box expansion for Marvel Champions. Right here. This is right here. Next Evolution. Ooh. This brings uh, not the X-Men, but the X-Force. What? To Marvel <laughs> Champions. If you were an X-Force character, who would you be? Cable. No. You'd be Deadpool. I would be Deadpool. That <laughs> yeah. is so right. Mostly because we've tried to kill you over and over again and it hasn't happened. Is he like actually X-Force? He is, yeah, he's part of the X-Force. He's everything. He's, he's like, all over. The, he is one of those characters like him and Wolverine are just kind of like part of everything yeah, as far as Marvel goes. Especially that is in the comics. true. I was happy to see him. I got like, oh, not to jump in. The ahead. magician with the mouth. That's oh, you. <laughs> oh, that would be awesome. But yeah, we got a chance to play this. I've played a ton of it. Me and Joe have played it as well. Mm -hmm. And we're going to take a look at it. This is kind of how it plays. All right, so let's take a look at what comes in Marvel Champions Next Evolution set here. All right, so you have two different heroes that are added with this big box expansion, and uh, we're going to take a look at Cable first. So uh, let's start with Cable's alter ego here. This is uh, Nathan Summers. He has a recovery of four. You may include player side schemes from any aspect in your deck. Player side schemes, what's that? That's a new um, thing in this expansion. Also, you have Soldier X set up, search your deck and discard pile um, for a player side scheme and put it into play. So you get to do that at the start of the game and then you shuffle your deck up. So he has all about these player side schemes, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Um, so he has two thwart, two attack, two defense as Cable. Then response after Cable defeats a side scheme, ready him. Limit once per phase. So anytime you defeat a side scheme, you're going to be able to unexhaust him, which is awesome. Cool. So let's take a look at some of the cards here. This is one of the player side schemes. So it still has a cost like any other hero card would, um, but it is also a side scheme at the same time. This is call for backup. It has a victory of zero. So after you defeat it, it will go into your victory display, which a lot of his cards trigger off of that as well. And it says when defeated, each player may search their deck and discard pile for an ally and put it into play. And this will have three threat on it per the number of players. So Cable could start the game with this card actually in play, and then there is a side scheme to go after that has a very positive benefit to be able to play an ally for free. It says call for backup. And this is leadership, which Caleb's deck, or um, Cable's deck is <laughs> leadership. Sorry, Caleb. Um, but yeah, and then the next one here is lock and load. This is uh, each player may search their deck and discard pile for a weapon upgrade that costs three or less and put it into play. And this only costs uh, two per player. Um, so this lets you grab weapons out of your deck. This is build up support. This is a cost of one. Each player may search their deck and discard pile for a support cost of three or less and put that into play. So that allows you to get supports out there. Um, this one gives you toughness. Um, basically it costs two. Each player give each identity a toughness card. The cool thing about all these side schemes is that they help each player. They are difficulty goes up by the number of players in the game, but once you're able to actually clear it out, it helps everybody at the table. And then this one's slightly different. This is the Techno Virus Purge. This is actually Cable's actual um, card here that goes in his deck specifically. Um, it's a victory of zero character other than Cable cannot remove threat from Techno Virus Purge. So you can't use your different characters other than Cable. You have to use just him to get rid of this. This is only five threat on here. But um, while it is in the victor display, Nathan Summers and Cable gain um, the trait Cable gets plus one thwart and plus one attack and plus one defense. So it basically adds one to all of his hero stats there. That is awesome. Um, so yeah, if you're able to actually get rid of that and get that um, taken care of, you boost up all of his stats and make him epic. Um, then there is Forced Amnesia. This is a one cost upgrade. After a non-permanent side scheme is defeated, add Forced Amnesia and that side scheme to the victory display, which doesn't seem like it would do much, but Caleb combos off of having cards in the victory display, so that's pretty cool for him. Then Temporal Leap is a two cost upgrade. When the main scheme would be completed, remove this card from the game and put a side scheme from the victory display into play. Move four threat from the main scheme to that side scheme. So normally when main schemes are completed, um, those can be game ending things or things that progress the, the side of evil and can kind of ruin the game for you. This gives you a little rewind in time and allows you to kind of <coughs> undo a little bit of that. So it could save the day in the right situation. Um, two cost upgrade, telekinetic force field, hero um, form only. 
Uh, when a friendly character would take any amount of damage, discard this and prevent all that damage. So an upgrade that helps protect you. Plasma Rifle. This one is awesome. Two cost upgrade. Restricted. Um, exhaust Plasma Rifle and spend a um, energy resource. Deal one damage to an enemy for each side scheme in the victory display. This attack gains ranged. This is a ranged attack that basically if you have completed four of these side schemes that are all in the victory display, you're going to be able to do four damage with just this one card, which is amazing. You have to discard a card to use it, but it could be huge. Um, and then we have another upgrade here. Hero response, after you defend against an enemy attack, exhaust this and spend one lightning resource and remove threat from the scheme equal to your hero's thwart. So this allows you to thwart during the enemy phase when the enemy is attacking you, when the villain's attacking you. That's pretty cool. And we have Professor. This is Alter Ego Action Exhaust Professor to choose to either draw one card or search your deck and discard or discard pile for a player side scheme and add it to your hand, helping you make sure you get those player side schemes out there. And then another support here. This is after a side scheme is defeated, you can ready this. So it said basically gives you resources and allows it to unexhaust itself just like Cable does. And you can exhaust this to generate a lightning resource, which of course combos off a bunch of his cards. Precognition here is a zero cost event. Look at the top X cards of the encounter deck where X is the number of side schemes in the victory display. You may discard one of those cards and put the rest back in any order. Awesome. Telekinetic Blast. Oh man, this one's crazy. Um, three cost event. Um, deal six damage to an enemy. Deal one additional damage to an enemy for each side scheme in the victory display. The last time uh, I had this card played, we had we had five cards in the victory display. So this card by itself did 11 damage. So that can be huge if you're able to get those cards in the victory display. And you have two of those in your deck. Then we have Mind Scan. This is a three cost or a two cost event. Um, remove three threat from the scheme. Remove one additional threat from the scheme for each um, side scheme in the victory display. So once again, helping you do stuff based off of side schemes you've done in the past. You get three of those in the deck. And then you have Body Slide. Change form. Each player may change to the form you are in. So basically allowing you to flip back and forth from your different sides, which is cool. Um, then Mission Planning. Um, play only if there is a side scheme in the victory display. Until the end of the phase, allies you control do not take consequential damage. So helping keep your allies in play. You get three of those. Uncanny X-Force, play under any player's control, max one team card per player. Each of your characters has the X-Force trait. Each of your characters has the X-Force trait. Um, each ally you control gets plus one thwart and takes minus one consequential damage after thwarting a side scheme. Basically making all your guys be able to wreck side schemes quickly. Um, then Mission Leader, this is a two cost upgrade. Reduce the cost to play Mission Leader by one if your identity has a soldier trait, which of course Cable does. Um, then after a side scheme is defeated, exhaust mission leader and you get to draw a card. So more things that combo off of that. This card needs to be talked about with um, Phantom X here. Um, he is a four cost ally. Um, after he enters play, search your deck or discard pile for Eva and put that into play. And he's got one thwart, one attack and three um, hit points. Seems pretty lame until you realize what this card is. It's a zero cost support that if he is not in play, you just discard it so it can't stay around if he's not in play. But um, as an action, you can exhaust Eva um, and then remove one threat from a scheme or deal one damage to an enemy or heal one damage from Phantom X. So an ally that can kind of stay on the table because he can heal himself after he takes his consequential damage and he has versatility to kind of like do damage or, or get rid of threat, super awesome. He does cost four though, but cheat him in in play is really helpful. Um, this guy here, three cost ally, one thwart, two attack, responds after he enters play, discard a card from the top of your deck until you, until you discard an X-Factor, X-Force, or X-Men ally is discarded, add that ally to your hand, helping you get more mutants. Sunspot, it's a three cost ally, one thwart, two attack. After you play Sunspot from your hand, choose a player and deal one damage to the villain for each minion engaged with the chosen player. Um, for each lightning resource to use to play Sunspot. So you can basically do a bunch of damage if you use a bunch of lightning resources to be able to trigger that. Sunspot goes supernova on them. Frenemies, this is a um, one cost event. Team up if you have Cable and Deadpool. Um, this is max one per deck. Uh, this is deal one damage to each 
Cable and Deadpool and remove one, three threat from a scheme and three threat from a different scheme. So you're able to like smash those side schemes pretty quickly, which is pretty awesome. Um, here is a weapon here, the uh, the the size si mar or whatever. This is a restricted. Um, after you play a, another psychic card, exhaust this and deal two damage to an enemy. So that's awesome. Then we have sidearm here. This basically attaches to an ally and gives that ally plus one attack and their attacks gain ranged. So you have a couple of those. And then you have the power of the mind. Uh, double the number of resources this card generates while playing a psionic card, which we had several of those in the deck. And we have Deathlock here. Um, after he enters play, choose an upgrade um, in a player's discard pile with a cost of one or less. It can be attached to Deathlock. Um, attach that upgrade to him. So that works really well with the sidearm also. Um, then we have do, 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 more of these cards. You have a, like three copies of each of those. And then we have Deadpool. So Deadpool is a three cost ally, two thwart, two attack, force interrupt. When Deadpool would be dealt consequential damage, heal three damage from him instead. Um, and then you add an acceleration token to the main scheme. So Deadpool can stay around and not be killed, but you're going to end up uh, adding, adding uh, acceleration token, which is terrible. Um, then we have, of course, the obligation, which I don't like to talk too much about, and then his nemesis, so that way when this stuff happens to people, they can kind of figure out all the terrible things that happen in their game. So that is Cable. All right, Domino, let's get lucky here. So Domino, Domino here has a three re re recovery, an action, choose a card in your hand and swap it with the top card of your discard pile, live it once per round. So it's awesome, you can grab things out of the discard pile. That's pretty cool. And then on the hero side here, um, we have one thwart, two attack, three defense. Um, when counting resource cards discarded from the top of your deck, count each printed wild icon twice. Um, choose a card from your hand and swap that card with the top card of your deck. So you can basically set cards from your hand onto the top of the deck and kind of allowing you to draw different cards. So kind of like, fixing your luck. Also, a lot of her cards are going to combo with cards, discarding cards off the top of your deck. So there's a lot of combos that go on here, and we'll show a little bit of how that works. So first card here is a two-cost upgrade, Probability Field. When you use a basic power, um, which is your thwart, attack, defense, or um, recovery, you can uh, use, um, you basically discard the top card of your deck, and you get plus one to that power for each of the icons discarded this way, the resource icons. So if a regular card with a regular symbol that just had one on it was there, it would just be one extra boost for that. If it had a wild while Domino was in hero form, it would be two because she doubles all of the wilds. A lot of her cards are kind of gonna affect things in this way, which you'll see right here. A two cost upgrade, Domino's pistols, um, restricted, um, exhaust Domino's pistols and then choose an enemy and discard the top card of your deck. Deal one damage to that enemy for each resource icon discarded this way. Um, this attack gains range. Of course, if it's wild, it gets doubled as well. And you have a couple of those allowing you to kind of ping damage to your opponents. Lucky and good. This is one cost upgrade. When a boost card is turned face up during an attack against you, exhaust lucky and good. Cancel that card's boost icons and boost ability. Um, give the attacking enemy another boost card for that attack. So say a really terrible boost card comes out, you can kind of get rid of that and kind of turn the luck in your favor. Um, Lucky Break, this is a zero cost upgrade. When you reveal the encounter card, discard Lucky Break, cancel the effects of that and discard it. Reveal another encounter card from the deck. So a terrible card comes up, you're like, nah, we're not gonna deal with that, we're gonna deal with a better one, hopefully, hopefully. Um, then the Painted Lady here, this is a support card that costs one. After you discard a card from the top of your deck, which she does a ton with a lot of her cards, um, you can attach it face down here instead. Um, there's a maximum of three cards there, and then when you're in alter ego form, you can exhaust this to add one card that is face down here, uh, basically attached there into your hand. So basically allowing you to get those cards that would be discarded off the top of your deck, allowing you to have more cards in your hand. Then Pip the Pug. This is uh, a one cost support. During Alter Ego, you can exhaust Pip the Pug and put one domino or posse card from your discard pile on the top of your deck. So basically allowing you to get those 
domino cards on the top of your deck, which allows you to combo with a lot of these wild icons. Then Good Workout is a two-cost event healer. Deal four damage to an enemy. Discard the top card of your deck for each resource icon printed this way. Deal an additional damage to an enemy, which of course you're comboing with again. You have a couple of those. Luck be a lady. Discard the top card of your deck and count the resource icons. For every resource icon, it does a different thing. It can heal two with energy. With science, it removes two threat. With, um, with physical attack, you deal three damage to an enemy. And with wild, you choose one of the above. So you basically are allowed to kind of do the thing that you want to do. And then right place, right time. Hero action, remove three threat from a scheme. Discard the top card of your deck. And for each resource there, you get to um, remove an additional threat from that scheme. So once again, just discarding cards off the top of your deck. This is an amazing card here, Jackpot. Um, this is a resource that has three different icons on it. After this card is discarded from the top of your deck, it's shuffled back into your deck. The fact that it has three icons on it means it's kind of boosting all these other cards that are discarding um, stuff off the top of your deck. So being able to get this discarded is great for you. Um, and then Outlaw, three cost ally, one thwart, one attack with an asterisk there, um, has toughness. Um, when Outlaw attacks, discard a top card of your deck. Outlaw gets plus one attack for this attack for each resource discarded this way. Once again, Domino has very much the exact same sort of thing going on. Do note that Outlaw is one of the three posse characters, Domino being one of them, and then Outlaw is another one of them. And then we have Diamondback, which is another posse as well. Um, there is a two-cost ally, one thwart, one attack. Um, exhaust Diamondback to deal one damage to her. Discard the top card of your deck. Deal one damage to each enemy for each resource icon um, discarded this way. So once again, another way to just deal damage by discarding the top card of your deck. Feral, four cost ally, two thwart, two attack. After Feral thwarts, discard the top card of your deck. For each um, resource icon, discard this way, deal one damage to the villain. So this one specifically attacks the villain. Um, Wolfsbane, three um, cost, two thwart, um, with an asterisk, then one attack. When Wolfsbane thwarts, name a card type and discard the top card of your deck. If that card is of the name type, you add it to your hand. So, very interesting because you can switch out, put cards on top of your deck. You're, you could know exactly what that card is to make sure you get it back into your hand. Kind of essentially allowing you to draw a card. Um, team Investigation. This is a new type of card here. This is an Alliance card. This has a cost of two per the amount of players in the game. And this says the players as a group um, can pay the cost of this card. Hero action. Remove three threat three times the number of players threat from a side scheme. So basically this allows you to just wreck a bunch of different side schemes, which is pretty cool. Um, so you have three of those, amazing card. Then even the odds is a two cost card here. Um, it requires a um, energy resource to play um, while paying this card. You have to have that list of resource. Then remove one threat per player from each side scheme, deal one damage to the villain for each side scheme defeated this way. So if you kind of line up a bunch of side schemes to all be completed at the same time, you could do extra damage to the villain. That's awesome. So you have three of those. Then Overwatch. This card's cool. Um, ma max attached one per scheme. Um, when any amount of threat is removed from attached scheme by a thwart, discard this card um, and remove an equal amount of threat from a different scheme. This can be really cool to help you knock out multiple schemes at the same time, especially when you're getting rid of a ton um, with some of your other um, justice cards there. Then we have a player side scheme, which we talked about with um, Cable there. This is uh, take, take Out the Guards. This is a, uh, it's basically each player may discard one non-elite minion in play. So if you're able to do this, you can kind of use your thwart to knock out minions. And of course, side schemes can help you do extra things if they're in the victory display as well. Then Superpower Training. Um, this, uh, when defeated, each player may search their deck and discard pile for an identity specific upgrade and put it into play. Helping you get those upgrades into play is awesome. It costs three per player, three thwart per player. Then the posse is a card that combos also off of your posse characters. This is a two cost event, max one per deck. Um, play only if you control at least three characters with a posse trait, um, which means you have to get those allies out there. This heals one damage from each of them and then readies them. Allows you to use them again. Then sharpshooter combos with Domino's guns here. A max one per player. When you make a ranged attack, discard the top card of your deck. This attack deals one additional damage for each resource um, discarded this way. So you have three of those. 
allowing you to give people sharpshooter skills. Then you have White Fox here. This is another posse. So you have four posse characters total, counting Domino. Um, this is an ally with one thwart and one attack. After White Fox is discarded from the top of your deck, put her into play under your control. So you can kind of cheat her into play by throwing her on top of the deck with Domino's ability and then being able to combo that out there. That's pretty cool. Atlas Spare. There's another posse here. This is a three, um, three cost ally. One thwart, one attack. Exhaust Atlas Spare. Look at the top card of a player's deck. If the card is an event, you may deal one damage to this character um, to add that card to your hand. Awesome. Um, and then, of course, you have the energy and genius and strength, which all these are great because they technically add two icons to all of her card. And this one's fun. Digging deep. Um, after this card is discarded from the top of your deck, you add it to your hand. So this one's also great because it gets put on top of your deck or it's just on the top of your deck. When you reveal it, doing all of that discarding stuff, it comes into your hand, allowing you to have more cards to actually play stuff with. And then, of course, we have the obligation and all of the um, nemesis minions and things like that for Domino. Well, that's Domino. So I normally don't like to go too much in depth with all the villains because I myself like to discover exactly kind of how things play and how a bunch of the cards trigger as I'm playing the game. But I do want to mention a little bit about it there. Um, we do have the Marauders. Basically what the Marauders do is you have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different Marauders and you have two different um, scenarios that deal with using these Marauder cards. The first is the Morlock Siege. Basically, what this is going to do is basically you're going to have to knock out three of these Marauders and while at the same time protecting different Morlocks. Um, if Morlocks die, you could end up losing this, the campaign, but also you're always having a different villain that you're having to knock out and face off against. Um, these are going to have very different things where most of them are going to be adding to their attack if you don't follow a evil thing that happened that could happen to you. If this guy's like, oh, discard the highest cost card you control, otherwise he gets... Um, X attack for the printed cost of the highest cost card you control. Um, then there's another um, campaign that deals with that. Um, then there's also the on the run uh, scenario, which you can play where you will randomly choose one of these, or if you're playing in the campaign, it's going to be one of the three you didn't defeat. And they're basically escaping with hope. And basically one of them is going to basically be getting stronger as the game goes along, being hope's character. Um, and you're going to have to try to knock that specific one out a couple times, which makes it very replayable as you have seven different characters to kind of go through, which have different abilities and slightly different stats that you can face off against in that um, on-the-run expansion there. Then the next one here is Juggernaut. Juggernaut is all about momentum counters. So basically he's going to um, get momentum counters. Basically he gets plus one attack for each momentum counter. Then when you reveal him, you put a momentum counter here a bunch of his cards are going to add momentum counters each time his uh main scheme is kind of finished he's going to put his helmet back on and gain momentum counters if you discard three cards of the same kind you can uh remove uh momentum counters from him and while he has his helmet on he does gain overkill as well so he's very much just all about attacking even if you fail his main scheme it just makes him stronger um, and then he just keeps going at it. He just keeps running and running and running at you until you are dead. So Juggernaut is a very different character that I really enjoy because he's just all about basically killing off your heroes, um, which is pretty interesting and fun. And you just have to slow down his momentum to take him out. Um, the next one here is Mr. Sinister. So Mr. Sinister uh, basically gets these different, he has three different modular sets that he's going to only start with one of them in play. He has Flight, which gives him extra attack. He has... Uh, Tele telepathy, which is going to give him extra scheme. And then he has super strength, which is going to give him extra attack again. Um, and these are all going to have slightly different effects to them as well. And these different modular sets are going to be added into the campaign as different parts of his main scheme go along. He's going to start with one of them randomly, and then the other ones are going to be added to him if you fail um, slowing him down the main scheme as he's stealing more and more mutant powers. Um, but yeah, Mr. Sinister is definitely an interesting way to mix it up. And of course, he's always placing threat on the main scheme, allowing him to get more and more of those powers. And then we also have Strife here. Strife is super interesting. He's based on a lot of the different types of cards that you have in your hand. If you have a whole bunch of cards of the same type, he can wreck you even more. So um, he's going to get plus one attack. He basically, his level one starts with zero attack, but he gets plus one attack for, for 
X, where X is the number of the most common card type in your hand. So that means if you had like three events in your hand, he would have three strength. If you had four events in your hand, you get four strength. Um, his main scheme here, go the threat, actually the first main scheme, the threat goes up by zero, but each time you would put threat on this during the beginning of the villain phase, it goes up by the biggest number of cards in your hand. So say you had those four events, this would go up by four. Um, so you are allowed to discard cards out of your hand to kind of minimize that. It's very interesting fighting against Strife, trying to figure out how to get extra, like not, not get messed up by cards. And then his second main scheme here actually adds extra cards into your hand each turn. So just making him that much stronger. He's all based off of the more cards you have in your hand, the worse it is for you. Um, so Strife is a very interesting villain. Then we'll also talk a little bit about the different modules in the game. So one thing here is Hope Summers. Um, is a module in the game that you can play with. You can actually play with Hope Summers in any module, um, kind of like Longshot um, was in the other X-Men set. But Hope Summers, uh, basically she starts in play during setup, and if she ever leaves play, you lose the game. Um, but uh, she has the same stats as your hero does, and she'll flip back and forth, almost acting like a first player marker for games. And then there's also a Captive Hope that you put in the game as well. A lot of the uh, scenario for the expansion here has a lot to do with hope coming into play and then a lot of the villain stuff can kind of like mess hope up in a lot of ways so um you should check that out you can add this into any campaign or any scenario against any villain it'll probably make it a little bit easier but if hope dies you just straight up lose the game um so that is one you have there and then you have all of the minions from the mutant slayers which are the marauders there these are going to be in the games where you're playing with the Marauders, and these are basically different versions of those same characters, and they can do all sorts of nasty stuff to wreck you. Um, so that's kind of cool there. Then you have Black Tom Cassidy. He has all of these different uh, Weeping Willows that can do a lot of stuff, like Guard and Quick Strike and just come out and, and mess you up. Then you have the Nasty Boys, a bunch of different mean, um, ugly-looking dudes who are going to kind of mess you up as well. And then you have Heavy Armament, which is a bunch of different technology that can mess you up with stuff there as well and then you have the mutant insurrection so more mutants trying to smash you down in different ways um and then you have the extreme measures even more mutants in the mutant liberation front trying to mess you up with wild style there um and then the last thing i want to talk a little bit about the cards that come in the campaign this is all about player side schemes so in the campaign, the player side schemes, basically you're going to choose one of these during each round of the campaign. And then if you complete it, it has an opposite side here and will kind of help you out in different ways. This will help you get prep counters and you can build uh, one upgrade with a cost or two or less and put it into play um, once this has been completed. Um, there's one that allows you to get this um, safe house into play, which can help you heal damage and draw cards. It's one that lets you get lets you gear up and allows you to get these pouches that put into play, which I will note is amazing with Domino's ability, basically allowing you to get a bunch of stuff. You'll be able to put one of those in your deck, which would be huge if that get discarded off the top of your deck with Domino. And there's a bunch of stuff like helping you get allies out and helping you have extra defense. Um, but do note, each time you complete one of these or each time you add one of these into your campaign, you're going to have new minions that are going to be nasty and mean to you and maybe even a side scheme that could be nasty and mean to you um, in your campaign. And a lot of the villains will start even meaner if you have completed those. And just like always, the rule book is going to have nice illustrations and comic book art and lots of storyline going through um, as you're playing through the campaign. But... You also have your campaign log, which you can log everything in there, noting which player side schemes you have, knowing the encounter cards that are currently in the deck, and the environments you've gotten into play as you've completed them and earned them as well. And you can say the murlocs you've saved and all that sort of stuff, helping you play through that campaign and affecting the campaign in different ways. Well, that is Next Evolution. Let's take a look at what Mo me and Joey think. All right, so we have varying levels of experience with Marvel Champions here. We I do. have played every single possible thing for Marvel Champions, and I love it. It's my number one game of all time. Um, but we do want to talk about how this changes things up and what it brings to the game. What were your thoughts going into this? I liked it a lot. Um, I like... Um I haven't played every single one. I own every single one because mm. eventually I'm going to play every one. I love Marvel Champions. Mm -hmm. And every time a new one comes out, I want to see what new... They get, and also I'm afraid though that they can't keep up the quality they've been putting out. 
because sometimes they feel like they might overcomplicate the system, mm. kind of ruin what it mm. is. But this one doesn't do any of that. I don't think they've done that at all. No, the and they haven't. Blowing my mind constantly with these sets is the fact that like they find a way to come up with not only new mechanics, but ways to make those interesting new mechanics give you the flavor or theme of that character. Right. Like Domino in this is all about Domino normally has like luck abilities or right. like the way to like manipulate luck and things like that. She's all about stacking her deck and setting her deck up, and then she has cards that are basically looking for wilds off the top of her deck. But you can pull cards out of the discard pile. You can also get rid of different encounters and things that come up. All sorts of different things that have to do with luck. And I just love how her character comes together and how that theme kind of like works. I do too. And I like Domino and Cable. I love the aspect as far as getting those, the schemes, what they call the, the, the player track. side schemes, which oh, is a brand new thing for this so set as well. So good because it's just the engine he can build to where at the beginning I was like, man, I'm doing Cable, I'm doing like one or two damage. But then towards the end, I was hitting for 11 and 12. And yeah. it's really good. So I. Even taking him out, I think I'm going to be using Cable a lot. Yeah, the player side schemes is a cool thing because they're harder to complete the more right. people you have in the game, but the more benefit you get from it. Like, hey, everybody now gets an ally. Hey, everybody gets an upgrade out of their deck. Hey, everybody gets a weapon. It is really cool. And Cable being able to pull those out of the deck and then being able to, like, do extra stuff with them and being able to unexhaust when they come out. He just is really cool. And he has a little bit of like temporal stuff in there of like, oh, if this main scheme gets ruined, then he can fix it and stuff like that, which feels very cable. Like, oh, he's a time traveler guy who has all these psionic abilities. It just feels cool the way they've been able to like make his character have this cool new mechanic, but then also feel a little bit like he's got cable stuff going on. I like that too. And like, I like the Alliance, like the Alliance cards and mm. all those are really, really well done too. I would love to see more of those as well just because like being able to just anything that allows you to have cooperation in a cooperative right. game is fun. Like I play this card, we can all pay the cost for this. That's huge. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, how many times do you get one and you're like, I can't quite afford this? Right. Yeah. And because the other person is giving something up as well. They're giving a card from their hand, something they can't use, right. but it will benefit everyone. And that really that brings the co-op really to the forefront of this. And the fact that those that, that card is like per number of players and the effect is per number of players. Like, oh, we're gonna yeah. have three threat per number of players. Holy smokes, that's that's massive, you know? And in a high player count game, you could just like wreck a, mm -hmm. a like main scheme or a side scheme that would be nigh impossible or like multiple rounds to get rid of. You can just be like, and it's gone. And then when you combo with some of the other cards in, in Domino's deck where it's like, hey, guess what? We're taking off six from here. And we're taking off six from that one. What? Yeah, that's it's, nice. It's fun. That's one of the things I love about Marvel Champions. I know you haven't played it nearly as much, but just the combo effects of everything in the game. I agree. Now, as far as like, all the scenario in here, what mm -hmm. you I like I like Joggernaut's mechanic as far as the mm -hmm. momentum and the taking the helmet off and everything. It has a lot of neat stuff, and the Hope Summers thing going back and forth was interesting. Yeah, the fact that Hope Summers plays such a big role and like. The entire story of this we don't want to get too spoilery with right. stuff but the fact that like if she dies at all then the game's messed up then you lose the game has kind of an interesting aspect of like having this really cool ally but if she dies she's gone you have all the marauders which the scenarios for that are really fun because it's always different the different characters you have juggernaut's a beast he just hits so hard and you have to figure out he's not that hard to like take his helmet off and stuff but if you're able to, if you're not able to like keep up with him building up that momentum, he's gonna hit you and overrun. You can't even use allies to really stop him and slow him down. He's just going to kill your character just straight out. That's just so thematic though. Right. You can't let him get momentum because you can't stop him. You right. know, you yeah, see, I, I do like that. And then we have Mr. Sinister, who's at like basically stealing mutant powers or whatever and adding different things to his character, which is another thing that's really thematic and really fun. Um, and just like you never know which Ver which order those powers are going to come out. Maybe he's going to be flying this time first. Maybe he's going to be super uh, super strong this time first. It just adds that replayability to these, these characters. Right. And then Strife was super annoying with the fact of like, oh, he counts the cards in your hand. He's going to let you have some more cards in your hand, but you know what? You're going to pay for that. Yeah, that was crazy. That was one going in, you know, that like this is not winnable. Right. And somehow we won. Yeah, the whole thing was all about him wrecking Hope Summers and stuff like that right. and trying to figure out how to get this gigantic side scheme gone and, and make it so he's actually defeatable while he is 
messing up your hand at the same time. You could discard cards out of your hand, but they're not going to be doing anything on your turn. Right. You know? So it's kind of like that balance of like how fast do we want the threat going up? How much are we going to discard? How strong are we going to let Strife get as he's trying to figure out how many cards we have in our hand? It can get rough. And then there are moments that all of a sudden your hand, hand size is increased. But then you've got him, too, that if your hand size is increased, you could have five of the same card, and you're going to get wailed on. Right. I feel like certain <laughs> heroes are going to never beat Strife. No, that's There's it. There's certain heroes that are like, my entire deck is events. Well, you know what? You're going to lose. Yeah. The, the characters that come in this deck are particularly, like, kind of well-balanced to go they against are. Strife because they have the player side schemes in there. They have a bunch of resource in there, which you don't have necessarily as much of a variety of cards in your hand. Right. A lot of other decks could just lose to Strife all the time. Easily, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, overall, I really like the, there's, in the campaign, there's um, player side schemes you can do to, like, have upgrades as well, which is really cool. That's cool. I love the way everything comes together, and I still love all the little comic stories they have in the campaign. It's really fun to go through all that stuff. What, what would you say you thought of this overall? And I liked it a lot going forward. Um, this is one that I will bring the characters out and play them in the different scenarios, the mm -hmm. different boxes and stuff. I really like this. And again, they're keeping the quality high. I'm going to give this an eight. I mm. really, really enjoy this expansion. And I'm one that needs everything. But again, consistently, everything they come out with just fits. And they they have found a way to make it unique, mm -hmm. new mechanisms, and not overcomplicate the game and lose the core of what it mm -hmm. is. So this, again, is it's great. And of course, when Deadpool show up for the first time in the deck, I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just all the theme in there for someone that loves comics, it's right. in there. The fact that, oh, Deadpool can't die, and if he does die, then, <laughs> then, then he, you put a token out there, so he's just just making the, the bad guy be able to succeed more. It's just these weird, interesting things, which so good. plays homage to the hero pack that's coming out for him as well. Yeah. Um, for me, I mean, Marvel Champions is my favorite game of all time. I love everything for it. I I got this box set. I bought it myself. Sometimes I get review copies. I wasn't going to wait for a review copy to come in. Wait. I went and pre-ordered from a store, picked it up just like everybody else. I bought this because I wanted to play it. It's been a drought of Marvel Champions for a it second. It has been. And so I really wanted more. And so I played this. I binged through all of it in like a couple days. It did. And I've had a blast with it. So this is going to get a 9.5 for me. I love Marvel wow. Champions. I love the way this comes together. I'm going to play with these heroes more. I love showing off how the different hero works. I love showing the game to other people and getting them into playing more Marvel Champions. So yeah, 9.5 for me. Wow. I love uh, X-Men stuff, and that's another reason why it's so high. It's yeah. just I love that mutants in my, um, in my game. Even and though Deadpool. X-Force. The Deadpool deck will be interesting. We'll review that in the future. Yeah, but yeah. can't wait for that. But yeah, anyway, that has been some Marvel Champions Next Evolution. What? I've been Roy Candy. I'm Joy Evans. We'll, uh, we'll kill you someday, Deadpool. Yeah, we're going to get him. <laughs>